uh, sorry about all that. Um, they want that's how they want the aircraft oriented, and the problem with that is having the center of gravity so close to it. Um, it, it just makes it unstable. It wants to tumble. So if you were to balance it on a single point, it would be three feet away from the center of pressure, which obviously gives it, like I said, the uh, uh, inability to maintain um, the alignment. Now they have thrust vector control, which kind of gimbals the rocket nozzle a little bit, so it goes, if the rocket starts to lean one way, the thrust kind of counteracts it, which is fine. But it's 330 feet long and, what, 15 feet wide? It's a big, long pencil or any kind of, you know, descriptive noun that you want to use. I don't like it. And it's, it, it, as Eeyore said, it's model rocketry 101. It's basic physics. That's really, it. the Ares one is just a bad design. Not only is it the shape that it has, I mean, you're, you're taking, sorry, one of these, putting one extra segment about that high up at the top. So it goes from here to here on the entire length. And then you put more crap on top of that, makes it un unstable, top heavy, whatever you want to call it. Then you also have to factor in the fact that it flexes in flight. It's designed to flex a little bit. That's why the space shuttle has that twang when it, la when it uh, launches. You'll see it kind of kick forward a little, and it rocks back, and then it'll lift off. This is not cool when you're only doing that on a single rocket design because at that point it turns into um, higher oscillation at the top. Everybody knows that you know there's a thing called thrust oscillation. It's a natural resonant harmony that all things have. Rockets are bad about it because they amplify. And the reason that they amplify is, well, it's a lever. You're on the end of a lever we've all ridden a school bus, you know that you get more of a bounce, you know, in the back of a bus when you hit a bump. It's the same kind of thing with a rocket. And they've actually determined that at, you know, just before thrust tail off, which is when um, the fuel is almost exhausted, you're experiencing plus or minus 5 G's in all directions side to side and uh, not forward and back, side to side on the lateral axis. So it would this and this but not so much this that's pogoing that deals with liquids but this is a big problem because that's 5g you're getting slammed against each side and if it's not you it's your brain against the side of your skull at 5g's the guys in uh, the mercury and gemini missions uh, mercury experienced 2g's lateral and they thought they were actually like they thought they ran into the tower so at 5 G's plus or minus, that's a big deal. So, I don't like the idea. And being 5 G's, it's at that length, 11 hertz. So, 5 G's every time in the span of one second, 11 times. 11 hertz is uh, 11 cycles per second. So you're getting slammed that violently, 5 G's, 11 times every second. So you're getting that kind of trauma to your brain, you're getting whatever kind of trauma to your body, whatever whatever isn't restrained. Not to mention, now you have to modify and enhance all the electronics on board, all the uh, buttons that you now have to reach are suddenly doing this. You're trying to hit a button in case something bad happens. It doesn't work that way. You can't do that. You know, you're, you're aiming for a still point and everything around you is literally doing that to try to it don't work that way so not only have you got this then there's the uh, another issue as the uh, uh, thrust oscillation which detracts um, weight from up mass capability they've got to put in some kind of suspension system to dampen that vibration and then there's also the issue of just based on its shape and design if you were to have a max Q abort which is when uh, you've all heard uh, go at throttle up. That's right after max Q, and max Q is basically um, the the highest point in the launch profile, where or not the highest point, but the highest uh, aerodynamic drag or forces actually try to resist the rocket going up faster. They have to punch through that resistance. 
if you eject at that point, there's a lot of drag on the um, on the on the uh, capsule. So as soon as you punch out or eject off of the rocket, it's being pushed back into it. And if you do it at the right time and you still get far enough away, then you have to deal with them, whoever them is, the ro uh, range safety officer, blowing up the, the rocket so that it doesn't affect you. But the boost rockets, you can't see it in the picture very well. Let's see if I can maybe zoom in. I'll try. See here. A little bit more. There's a line right here called basically a zipper and it's a little hard to see in the picture but basically what it does is it literally unzips the rocket it blasts a, 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 a line a um, fracture down the entire length of the rocket so that all the the thrust instead of being forced out the bottom gets forced out into the opening from the side so you've got all this raining debris burning on fire 5000 degrees it's solid it's not going to go out raining on top of your your ca capsule and the parachutes that your capsule is now riding underneath it um as you just said it's basically deck cord that's what the zipper is the uh, shape charge it's scary stuff and they think this is a good idea to put humans on why okay you can do it with this design because you've got this liquid which absorbs a lot of the thrust oscillation that that works okay I'm not complaining about that we've seen video from inside the shuttle it's really not that bad it's just a bumpy ride over a gravel road but then you get rid of the liquids which absorb that and only ride on the solids which don't absorb it that's you know that's a bumpy ride like I said and for for them to think that this is a brilliant idea not only the cost not only the uh, non-manned rating yet but all these issues and the Liberty Launcher is going to experience the same thing because I got confirmation yesterday during one of the space up questions that it was going to be a five segment launcher okay we're going to be working with France that's cool you have Ariane you have Aries it's Aries 2.0 and you're you're mixing the two neither one of them are technically man rated and they won't be for five years that's part of why I like the, the Jupiter style. A lot of people like, oh, you know, uh, Ben doesn't support it. Quantum G doesn't support it. I do just because of its basic, simple interim mentality. It, you move the engines from the space shuttle onto the bottom of the tank. These three go underneath the red thing or the orange thing. These stay how they are. You keep the capsule, which will be the crew, put that on top of this, get rid of the payload bay, get rid of these big old giant things and this tail here you save a lot of mass that's like 50,000 pounds right there that you save just by cutting off the payload bay the wings and the tail it's like 50,000 pounds so instead of using it weight you know uselessly on every single launch you put it towards something productive as you know actual payload so there's a whole lot of stuff and um, you know I I don't understand the logic behind going with the Ares design. I could go off even further. I'm sort of running a little bit short on time, but on time, but you know what it comes down to really is just a bad design. It's too expensive. We don't even have the knowledge for it. Like I said, it's not man rated. Neither one of them are. Um, Arion, they didn't expect to man rate that. They're years behind, and like I said, the five segment boosters, that's you know several years away. But there, there's so many issues. So you've got thrust oscillation. Oh, another thing. This, the Orion capsule was originally designed to be five and a half meters across. That's big. Then they had to cut it down to four and a half. Because suddenly Aries can't lift it. So they have to cut down on the people that they're allowed. You know, it started off with seven people. Now it's six. Now they're saying it's three, maybe four, but they might go to three, which is basically Apollo on steroids, really. But they have to lose a parachute. It was supposed to have land landing capability. Now it has to be water landing capability because they can't afford the weight of the, the uh, airbags, basically, that the uh, land landing needs. So they have to land in the water now. They can't do both. 
and they can't leave it unattended so that means they can go out into space they can do a spacewalk but somebody has to stay inside the store to make sure that all the systems are working you can't just let it do its own thing without anybody in it why because they keep spending all this stupid money on these just bad designs but NASA's okay with it they want to spend the money I don't agree with it being a taxpayer like many of you are obviously it's it's stupid so if you want to look these up you're you're more than welcome to I'm not hiding anything I'm not lying about anything the facts are out there on the internet if you need one good example go to nasaspaceflight.com they have a thread about direct or the Jupiter style rockets they have a, a thread about Aries or several threads about both that explain in detail the problem with this you can also find it on Wikipedia. You can also find it on a few other sources. Just run a search for Jupiter Direct and Ares 1 rocket, and you'll see it. But the facts are all there. I'm not hiding. I'm not making anything up. This is all factual stuff. And it drives me nuts because NASA is insisting on this. Basically, the reason I'm making this video is I want you people who are actually watching this to look up the facts yourself and write a letter to your congressman telling you don't support the Liberty Launcher, you don't support Ares, you may or may not support Jupiter or whatever kind of rocket you do. I, like I said, I personally support Jupiter because it's just a smart design. I've been a fan of it since I first saw it, and that was three years ago or so. But there's so many problems, and there's so many problems. I mean, I don't know how to summarize it all in a span of 15 minutes. But, like I said, I, I support the, the Jupiter style just because of its sheer simplicity. You know, you're taking this and redoing it. And it works because you're getting rid of the extra crap. On the Ares rocket, you're not doing that. It's a risk to the crew. It's a really expensive. It cost $500 million just to make the rocket. And all they did was they added another segment, which is from here to here, on top of this. That was a dummy stage. They didn't even have extra fuel. Not only that, but the top upper stage was uh, inert, which means it had no fuel or no propellant on board. And overall, the entire rocket was 200,000 pounds lighter than the production model would have been. So you're looking at basically an 80% rocket of what it was supposed to be. That's why they launched it. They just, oh, look, it's an Estes rocket. So... There's a lot of problems, a lot of flaws, a lot of, pro you know, just issues with this design. And I'm completely against it. Take it for what it's worth. The facts are out there. I want you to look it up. If you don't believe me, by all means, you're more than welcome to. And uh, Eeyore just uh, mentioned a couple minutes ago, if uh, you're going to get the capsule far away enough during a solid rocket booster abort, i.e. an Ares ejection, you kill all your payload margins and a little more. Because solid fuel is heavy. And solid fuel is designed so that as soon as you need it, it's ready to go. Um, when it comes to liquids, liquid fuel, um, you have, obviously you're going to have an issue because hypergolics, which are the chemicals that react immediately with each other as soon as they contact, um, that's rough for the, uh, the crew itself. If you're dealing with cryogenics, they boil off, so they may not be able to spool up as quickly. Plus, you also have to uh, account for the weight of the pumps that get the fuel and the liquid and the propellant going. So it's just, you know, it's more efficient to go with the solids. But at the same time, you're also paying a lot in mass capability. So, go ahead, look it up on the internet, do all that. Find out why I'm so against these designs. They're just unsafe. They're just expensive they're just delayed there's so many problems like I said so look it up for yourself NASA is telling you that it's gonna be five years before they can do this realistically we could have a new rocket after the shuttle retires within three years of its retirement so if they retired at the end of the or in June of this year or September of this year three years from now we'll have a rocket ready to go if NASA played their cards right but as we all know NASA is good at you know especially lately NASA is really good at dropping the ball on things that matter. So write your congressman, tell him that you feel that we should be ready to go. We should have that capability of, you know, not having a gap between one spacecraft design and another. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. And uh, 
I might make another one tonight. I may make another one of these tomorrow. Uh, either way, thanks for watching. Um, write your congressman. Tune into Space Vidcast. Stop by my show on Fridays. Stop by their show on Thursdays. And I will go ahead and catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes to the sky.